interact with all of you. So today, for the next one hour, we will be uh, discussing about the application of a decision support system in water and nutrient management for improving the crop productivity in the changing climate. So actually, I planned the lecture in such a way that we will be covering these topics. Uh, however, it is being online. I request all of you to uh, any questions, clarifications, or any uh, doubts or something, uh, either you can put it in chat box or you can ask the organizing team to stop me in between if needed, or else after the completion of the session, maybe we can interact for uh, five to 10 minutes, depending on the time. So uh, here, what I wish to cover today is what is the scenario of agriculture or horticulture in India and how the climate change it is affecting, even though every one of us know the importance as well as the, its impact because now it is in our doorstep everyone feels the uh, change in climate so there is no need or no history or uh, no need to doubt about that whether it is changing or not because because of the extreme events which we are facing whether it is flood or drought or the extreme rainfall events landslides etc then with respect to agriculture what are all the mitigations and adaptation options and uh, that actually, what are the case studies, a uh, few case studies which we have carried out, uh, will I will be presenting and what are the strategies and solutions, especially uh, with respect to the decision support systems, uh, which are commonly available and most of them are free source uh, softwares or whichever we have developed also, I will be presenting. And uh, these are all few uh, such uh, uh, decision support systems like one is NATMON, that is a nutrient monitoring, then DSAT, AquaCrop, CropWatt, Rinsey, ICNMS, like that. Few are there. If someone of you is interested in any of these software, because within one hour it will be very difficult to cover the entire thing, but they can be in touch with us uh, for any uh, clarifications or any doubt about this. So, mostly this is funded by DST, TFAC. Uh, Department of Environment and Climate Change, Ministry of Water Resources, like that. So if you look at the horticulture scenario, most of the crops, uh, vegetables as well as fruits and spices, everything, India stands in the top uh, five ranks uh, in the area as well as in the production. And which is having a lot of export opportunities by which India is earning a huge amount of, uh, means crores of rupees in the term uh, when you compare with the agriculture sector. And the growth rate is also much higher in the case of horticulture crop uh, than the uh, food grains or the agriculture crops. But if you look at the uh, scenario, whether it is a food grain production or even the horticulture production, currently we are self-sufficient thanks to all the agriculture researchers, extension team members and the entire uh, farmers. But still, uh, we may feel, uh, means we may feel short of uh, our target, uh, if you look at the future targets, as per the FAO, uh, by 2050, we need to produce 450 million tons. And currently, we are producing around 300, 310 million tons for the last few years. So, we need to produce almost 1.5 times higher than the current production. Whether we said possible to in introduce new areas and all is a really a question mark. So, what we need is horizontal expansion will be much difficult and some of the lands are going degraded and all. So you need to have a vertical expansion. At that juncture only, we have the issue of climate change. So now it is a fact, and the science behind it is well uh, established and well proven. And if you look at the data from the 1880s or from pre-industrial era, it is almost 1 degree to 1.2 degree uh, higher temperatures we are observing. But whatever may be the issues, but earlier and all there were a lot of debates whether it is global warming or global cooling, such kind of debates were there. But now it is ext extraordinarily clear that uh, these issues are there uh, at global level, regional level, as well as local level. But what you need to do the strategies, whether IPCC or any government forums or any policy makers, now they are thinking that these local actions needs to be given more focus so that the regional as well as global uh, issues can be sorted out or we have a plan as per the AR6 report of IPCC. But if you look at the agriculture scenario, uh, uh, all of you may agree that uh, agriculture has a significant impact uh, because of the change in climate. It may be 
the loss in quantity means in the sense loss in yield loss in quality then total even including the cost of production it has a direct thing then whether if you look at that is one side it is the negative impact caused by the climate change to agriculture but similarly there is another uh, debate or another issue is that agriculture is also contributing for this uh, emissions of uh, glg which again further worsen the situation of climate change so that is also you need to control that at the same time we should not lose our production so improving the resilience of agriculture system to climate change requires a protection of the natural resource basis and the development of new strategies tools and practices for adaptation so if you look at the impact it can be a short term impact or it can be a long term impact so long term changes what we observe is so far in the climate change it is the shift in the or the trend uh, whether it may be increasing trend or decreasing trend in rain, rainfall that is precipitation then increase in the number of extreme events means intensity of rainfall is increasing which we are facing every year especially if you see kerala lot, last year also uh, continuously uh, there was a heavy rain which results in floods as well as landslides so uh, recently also the same issue if many of you might have read in this year also in vinad it has taken a lot of lives so this is a common issue then coming to directly to agriculture if you see there is a direct impact on the crop yield as well as crop quality so what we did is this has to be substantially proven or scientifically proven how this is happening so we did few case studies uh, that is only now i'll be presenting so this is one of the study funded by tfac tfac is nothing but the technology information forecasting and assessment council of uh, government of india in this we along with the institute of rural management then national institute of hydrology these three uh, partnering uh, teams as well as the esa that is international institute of applied system analysis austria they are the policy makers or think tank of the fao for deriving the food and agriculture related policies so here what we did is we used this model called agroecological zonation model which has five modules i will describe briefly about this uh, so it has a five module first module is uh, deals with the climatic analysis then the second module is about the biomass and yield third module is agroclimatic constraints means with the data of climate as well as the crop production details how the climate factors if suppose it is changing what will happen to the yield uh, because of the climatic related constraints maybe it may be due to high temperature or very low temperature uh, heat waves like that uh, similarly it is shortfall in rainfall deficit in uh, these things those things related to climatic parameters or you can call it as weather parameters if you look at the seasonal level then a fourth module is the agroedaphic constraints which is the soil related uh, issues it may be soil salinity soil problem soils or soil workability especially the structure related issues all those things are captured in the fourth module and the fifth module is nothing but the production potential of each crop means uh, once a variety is developed it may have its own potential if everything is good for example soil climate and all other environmental settings or environmental covariates are fine then what is the its ability to produce so that is called the production potential of that potential crop yield so this module will calculate all these things and with the constraints what is the actual yield we are getting and what is the potential yield so this will give you the yield gap in that yield gap based on the spatial data sets of land resources crop statistics harvested area and all, we can understand where the issues are happening and in future how if the climate is changing that means temperature is increasing rainfall we cannot predict so such a situation what will happen to the crop so yield can also be predicted and based on that yield gap which are all the strategies we can apply so that the yield gap can be reduced so this is what all the module deals with it's a open source software you can see that it's a global agroecological zonation model so in that module after you understand that whether the for initially we will classify the land into five classes very suitable suitable moderately suitable marginally suitable and not suitable so after that if you want to improve the yield or reduce the yield gap what are all the management strategies you can adopt so for that also we have developed three uh, scenarios just for understanding low level medium level then high level similarly irrigation also you can go for different options 
uh, we have tried a flood irrigation, sprinkler irrigation, micro irrigation, drip irrigation, then drip fertigation with precision farming, then as such rain fed scenarios. So initially we have gone for the climatic analysis and we found that uh, you can see from this particular image uh, that uh, Uh, from this portion onwards, you can see after 1960s, there is a lot of change, especially this is a one sample data we are showing for Kerala. Uh, almost we have done for 120 years. Uh, so uh, the particularly after 1960s, we can see that the frequency and intensity of the rainfall is changing. This dark red color indicates that. So which may be due to the fact of uh, related to the climate change influenced by the anthropogenic changes. So here, the historical data we have used around 110 years to 120 years data because we started in 2010 to 20. So initially, we have taken 1980 to 2010 as the historic period. And uh, beyond that, we have taken as a future scenario. But over the period of study, we completed the study by 2018. So almost up to 2018, we have taken as the historical period. And then initially, we started with the IPCC five air fire report, that is RCP scenarios. But later, once the in 2022, when the new scenarios has come, we have updated with the SSP scenarios, especially uh, SSP 1.9 and to SSP 8.5. These are all. I, I hope many of the participants may be aware of this. If any one of you have some doubt, uh, we can discuss this also. Like uh, here, the SSP 5 uh, 8.5 uh, is the worst scenario, which is similar to the RCP 8.5 also. And then we have gone with the different models, almost uh, 30 uh, models we have tested. Uh, and which one is matching to the Indian conditions? Because this study area, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have done for three locations. One is Kerala, another one is uh, Gujarat, whole of the state, and then Madhya Pradesh, Bandalkan region. Uh, so these three uh, regions, the long historical data we have collected from IMD. And based on that, whichever model is coming closer to that for the historical data, that model only we have taken. Even though we have taken all the 30 models, out of which then there's four GCMs, we have found that it is matching with the field realities at the ground. And then this individually also, this four is also not following. So what we did is ensembling of all these four models and mixed it together. And then uh, we have gone for the future scenarios. Future scenarios we have taken uh, 2011 to 40, then that, uh, 41 to 70 and 71 to 100. So that is what the scenarios. Then produce the yield maps, uh, suitability maps, all those things. This is just a sample I am showing for yield of rubber, rice, many crops, coffee. And uh, we found that, just I am not going into the detail of each one of uh, crops, but if you look at that, for most of the crops, we found that yield is declining wherever, but when you go for some management practices, especially in the case of rice, black pepper and arecanet showed an improvement in the yield. And some cases in coconut also, we found that if there is managed properly, uh, we got a positive trend. Otherwise, if you generally look at most of the crops are uh, declining in yield in the future scenarios. Similar is the case with the site suitability also. For example, in the case of coffee, which is a very good example we have taken, and uh, it's well appreciated also. I will show that slides later. So currently the coffee growing area may not be suitable. Almost 80% of the coffee growing area may not be suitable in the future scenarios, which means that it is very sensitive to climate factors. So based on this next, currently now we are doing with uh, under NICRA, uh, this project uh, with along with the uh, Indian Institute of Spices Research. So here we are considering three crops, uh, turmeric, uh, black pepper and ginger. Uh, so this is one of the paper from that. So turmeric importance, all of you may be knowing, and the main producing states as of now is Maharashtra, Telangana, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, and Maharashtra. So here our main objective was to understand the terrain suitability uh, based on the historic climate data, then identify new areas, whether any new areas can be brought under turmeric under the changing climatic scenario in the future. And third part is in future, which are all the area will become hot spots where it cannot be grown or there is a change. The same methodology only uh, we have adopted here also, uh, agroecological zonation model. So I'm not going into detail. These four modules and the fifth module is suitability. 
n potential yield. So here, compared to the earlier one, here we have increased the number of models. Uh, since uh, the selected crops are very specific to climate, especially the spices, very sensitive also. So we have gone with the different models and then uh, did the site suitability analysis by AHP methods, uh, weighted overlay analysis and different methods. And then compared with the field data as well as uh, your observation data with the field experiments, uh, which uh, IASR was coordinating. So these are all the thematic maps. So if you see the area production productivity data from the statistics, similarly from the research uh, database also, we have compared and we found that uh, climatic factors, especially the temperature, maximum minimum temperature, are significantly influencing the thermic yield. And using some machine learning models also, we have attempted that and which month the temperature is more influencing, all those things we have identified. And then the same has been applied into these models for the future scenarios. So then we found that future scenarios, especially in the later part of the future scenarios, and that too under SSP worst scenario case 5.8.5, you found that many of the areas which is currently suitable is becoming not suitable. So which is very, uh, what you call threatening kind of thing. But if you look at the uh, current scenario, uh, it is somewhat uh, better and some new areas also we can identify. But when coming to the hard parts, uh, we found that uh, based on the analysis with currently uh, it is growing on the popular states, uh, you can see the hot spots, especially the Gujarat region and some of the Odisha as well as the northern part of Karnataka, we can found that. This also we have done for different categories like temperature, rainfall, uh, maximum temperature, minimum temperature, then rainfall, humidity. Uh, all those things individually how it is having and when you combine these parameters what is happening so the results showed that you can see that this is the ssp2 scenario ssp 8.5 scenario and the result shows that new areas there is a possibility that currently as of now you can explore new areas like punjab haryana chattisgarh gujarat where you can expand the cultivation whereas the Hot spots now currently it is grown like Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Madhya Pradesh. Some of the areas will become hot spots, and in the worst case scenario, these areas we cannot uh, grow, or even if you grow, it will be a lot of uh, vulnerability issues, means uh, yield reduction you will have to face. This we have confirmed with few field experiments at different locations also. Under elevated temperature, what will happen? under uh, precipitation changes what will happen flooding what will happen like that a few studies we have done and confirm that these are all small field experiments but for validating the model we have used such kind of things so now we have identified that these are all the uh, issues with respect to the climate change yield decline will be there even if you manage with some of the strategies how much yield improvement we can get so that we have gone for a few uh, field studies. So these are all generally we have attempted both on soil and water nutrient management, which is possible for regulating that because some of the natural parameters you cannot uh, change it under control conditions only it is possible. Whereas in the open cultivation, what are all the possible changes we can try? That is what we have attempted. And these are all some of the techniques. One is improving irrigation efficiency through precision farming, micro irrigation, irrigation scheduling proper, and watershed management. Then rainwater harvesting for especially the water scarce areas, then water quality management, then minimizing the water use. So there only we have applied these decision support systems, uh, especially whichever I was discussing. Uh, like Nakmon, Global Agroecological Zonation, Hydras, Cropwatt, Grunsi, Aqua Crop, and Century. So this is one of the uh, study carried out in Kerala as well as Tamil Nadu where we promoted the drift fertigation, especially under precision farming techniques. And it has done through the farmer participatory approach. That is one of the advantage of this particular program. So this one example, I will be show, showing one of the case study, which was funded by Department of Science and Technology with a fund of around 1.25 crores. Uh, and here we have done almost all the districts of Kerala. Uh, we have taken some two plots in each district and selected the major crops and gone with the irrigation uh, scheduling one thing, then 
fertigation schedule, like depending on the soil type, the soil characteristics, as well as the crop requirement. And the schedule has been prepared using these models and uh, given to the farmers. And farmers themselves were operating the drip irrigation system. Only technical advice was given to the farmers. So this is a list of the farmers. So here, as I mentioned, two things we have given. One is irrigation schedule, that means quantity of water requirement, as well as the intervals. Then the second one is related to the drip fertigation schedule. So in this case, you can see the soil wetting pattern for the banana plot. So initially, we have collected the soil samples. Uh, from that particular location and then we have modeled it so this is you can see during the irrigation process uh, if suppose the farmer is irrigating for two hours how the soil moisture pattern is there this is two drippers for one banana so after 24 hours how the moisture will become after 48 hours after four days like that we have simulated and that has been verified in the field also using soil moisture probes and all that has been the published paper which i was showing so here in this particular case, up to 48 hours means up to two days, there is no need for irrigation. So likewise, for all the plots we have calculated and given to the farmers. So the farmer, actually what we will be giving is, uh, you need to irrigate for two hours at the three days intervals or four days intervals or two days intervals like that. Similarly for vegetable, this is another example for vegetable plot. Here they have to irrigate daily. So like that, that schedule at what time they have to operate. That has been given to them. And for their convenience or to understand, we have monitored these crops in their form using soil moisture probes and all. These are all some of the photographs uh, of those farms. You can see that. And uh, that has been, you, you can see from here, this is monitored in the field itself. Similarly, for uh, initially for developing the irrigation schedule, we have brought the samples in the lab and analyzed uh, for running the model. And then for validation, we have done in some selected plots uh, how the soil moisture is behaving. So these are all some of the crops. Uh, so you can see that, for example, this case, you can see the uniformity in size of uh, the produce. So that was one of the advantages since water and nutrients are regulated. So what was the outcome? What we observed is 100% higher yield, which is the positive, because almost all the plots, I've shown here only uh, the results of uh, Kerala, but Tamil Nadu also the same has been done. Uh, so almost we got an extraordinarily high yield uh, since water and nutrients are being controlled and given as per the requirement. The 90% first grade products, as I was telling, the uniformity in the produce also there. Then 30% premium price, five to six days shelf life was more than the normal product. And we observed that around 40% savings in water and 25% reduction in fertilizer usage, then 30% en energy saving, especially if you talk about uh, greenhouse gas emissions and all. So electricity you can reduce, extended crop harvest and empowerment of farmers. So this is uh, one uh, such technology uh, by which uh, some of this critical issues with respect to climate change we can uh, manage to a greater extent. That is what just uh, I was presenting. So is there any doubts or clarifications or questions to be asked? Maybe I'll take one, just a break. Any questions or? Being online, I'm not sure. That's why I stopped. Huh? Uh, and even you can uh, put it in chat box also. If there is no more questions, then I will continue. And after the presentation, we can. So we will take question answers at the end. End. Yeah, OK, OK. Then I will continue. Yeah. Please continue. So, yeah so first uh, i was talking about the drift fertigation uh, which is one of the technology or management with the help of precision support system how we can manage so now next part i will be going is mainly for the rice crop what are the soil and water management techniques uh, especially under the changing climate uh, so that uh, this is one of the review paper uh, which we have written and uh, if someone of you is interested you can go through this paper so this is based on uh, whatever results we have done 
uh, based on the uh, what do you call the impact of climate change as well as the how to manage it. This is one of the project uh, in which we tried to attempt the yield forecasting of paddy uh, with the help of crop simulation model and remote sensing data and what are the management strategies we can adapt. So here we have used uh, satellite data, then ground truth data, crop cutting experiments and crop yield at the gramma panchayat level that also we have measured and then uh, validating the same with whatever models we have attempted. So this was the methodology we have used uh, for the rice area mapping. Uh, so uh, you know, normally rice is being cultivated during monsoon season, so there will be a lot of cloud coverage. So what we did is uh, using high resolution satellite data, especially uh, not only optical, we have utilized microwave also to understand or to map uh, exactly where the patty uh, is there. So uh, using the satellite data we have done, this project was done during 2019 to 23, uh, those 22, those period. And we have validated the uh, this remote sensing database based on some field experiments conducted at farmers field as well as in the experimental stations. So this is one of the experimental stations that uh, in which uh, we have, uh, this is mainly utilized for validating the crop simulation model. Especially we have attempted with the DSAT uh, and uh, EPSIM as well as one more model, InfoCrop also we have attempted, but uh, the results whatever I am presenting is based on DSAT. So here the different treatments were also given even for upland cultivation under especially the aerobic rice. Uh, what uh, we, under the changing scenario, if suppose the farmer there is a water scarcity is there, so if he is going for aerobic rice, what will happen? So like that for different scenarios, we have attempted field experiments also, uh, flooded condition, aerobic conditions, then DSR method, uh, transplantation methods, the nutrient levels different. It is being uh, put here. Uh, you can see that high uh low uh, medium uh, like that uh, then varieties also we have tested uh, most of the popular varieties grown in kerala as well as Tamil Nadu. and the measurements what we have done is morphological measurements soil measurements uh, related to moisture then physiological measurements like uh, photosynthesis tomato conductance uh, transpiration etc so this is one of the upland cultivation where uh, we have gone for the aerobic rice uh, so, including photosynthesis, all those parameters have been collected, and this is also published uh, paper. So, with this experiments, we have calibrated for rice, uh, popular varieties in Kerala, Uma and Jodi. Uh, similarly, with respect to Tamil Nadu, also some four varieties we have uh, calibrated. Then, coming to the field forecast, uh, what we did is we have taken the spectral signatures from the remote sensing images as well as from the field data using spectro radiometer this is one of the sample uh, which we are using uh, which we are spectro radiometer which we are using uh, so you can see from this image uh, the remote sensing this is the remote sensing uh, image actually one pixel i am showing so a b c d is the different stages means uh, starting from the initial stages vegetative stages uh, tillering flowering and maturity stage so you can see the color difference. The same has been observed in the uh, spectroradiometer field observation as well as in the satellite imagery. Even though numerically the values were different, but the pattern or the trend we could observe. So this is what we have used it uh, for calibrating and validating the models. And it was very well matching with the observed as well as the predicted yield. And in addition to that, we have gone for nutrient management as well as water management. Water management, we have tried with the crop water as well as aqua crop. Uh, aqua crop is what here I'm showing. So then the spectral data, what we have collected in multiple fields, especially farmers fields also we have taken. These are all some of the uh, field data from Minard. Uh, th this is the published paper from that for the hyperspectral data. Uh, then we have compared the spectra for different days, like 50 days, 60 days, 75 days, 85 days, like that for different varieties. So that the spectral signatures, whatever we have taken, uh, was attempted to match with the uh, remote sensing images. So here uh, it is for the Alapura region. Then compared that this is Palakkad. So like that for different fields as well as the, this is in the Agricultural University Research Station. Similarly, it has been done for Tamil Nadu also in three districts, uh, especially uh, 
Pudukotai, Karur, and Tirchirapalli district. So, what we done is based on this, we have predicted the yield. Uh, first one is area mapping. This is what we have done here. You can see that accuracy was around 89 percentage. The yield variation was around. It is it is a very good one if you look at the overall regional level prediction. We got up to 80 percent prediction, and then it has been aggregated to the Gramma Panchayat level. So one advantage with this particular method is during the crop season itself, we can identify where the crop is grown. And if the yield is forecasting, means predicting yield is less. So plan for some management practices by which you can improve the crop productivity. So which are all the area actually we are getting more yield we can identify, which are all the area less yield we can identify. So we can target those less yield areas uh, by implementing some management strategies in field season means during the crop growing season itself we can manipulate or we can uh, modify the management practices and improve the yield so this is one of the paper published from that so this is another study which we carried out for punjab and haryana uh, so understanding the water stress uh, how it is there at uh, which area it is being stressed and how it can be managed so then similarly based on the request from the department of uh, agriculture for kerala we have done for uh, some drought assessment studies also using the softwares so this is one copy which i was telling earlier you can see this is a wet year uh, 2007 april and then may and this is a drought year so uh, this is based on NDVA only, but still you can understand these areas are uh, severely affected. So which was evident from the uh, coffee board yield data also, that also we have published actually. And then based on that, we tried to attempt to, to develop a decision support system. So for the drought assessment. So this is what for Palakkad region we have made it. So this is currently also running. Uh, you can verify from our website. Uh, drought information system. So like that, we have a few decision support system also based on the results, whatever we have obtained. And coming to the climate change, we cannot uh, go uh, without uh, uh, addressing the carbon related issues, especially the carbon sequestration as well as the GAG emissions. So for that also, what are all the decision support systems or tools available and how we can manage that. So here, what we did is, uh, especially this was funded by Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, uh, and currently one project is going on with the NRC. So uh, this is a uh, decovariance tower is the one which you can measure the CO2 flux, uh, water flux, and all those fluxes, but it's a costly thing. So it may not be possible or feasible in all the uh, locations. So what we did is uh, initially we gone with the change in SOC stocks based on the survey data, as well as the field measurements. And for field level measurements, we have gone for, especially for carbon dioxide, we have gone with the uh, alkali trap method, it means a traditional method. Whereas for methane and all, we have gone for the emission techniques using GCMS. And then some process based models are also available that uh, we try, means we try to compare with the field observation data and uh, validate that. So this is one of the study under uh, NRSC National Hydrology Project. Uh, it is done for tea as well as the vegetables. So here in this particular project, what we have done is that uh, NRSA project I am not dealing, uh, discussing in detail, but this one is what we tried with Kerala. Uh, three objectives were there, mainly to understand the carbon stock and different fractions of carbon pools. And uh, what is the potential of each zone based on the land use as well as the uh, carbon dynamics or GHG emissions, how it is there, or what is the changes happening. So here we have identified uh, five districts in uh, Kerala and uh, did the analysis based on these criteria. Farms were selected based on these six criteria: agroecological units (AEU), the cropping system (irrigated) as well as rainfall. Topography based because Kerala, as many of you know, it is divided into three zones lowland, midland, highlands, uh, less than 7.5 meters, 7.5 to 75, and above 75 meter elevation. Uh, then size groups marginal, small, medium, and large. Then the sixth one is organic and inorganic, wherever that option is available. Because Kerala being 
uh, now focusing on organic, uh, we got a lot of plots. So this is the selected areas, land use cropping systems, as well as the important crops which we have selected, paddy, coconut, banana, arecan and waste, rubber, nutmeg, pulses, fruits and vegetables, forest area as well as which are all the zones and all. This is some sample data, how we have collected all those things, including livestock and few field experiments also to monitor this carbon dioxide emission as well as uh, sequestration potential and then modeling different crops with the different management strategies. All those things have been attempted. And uh, the emission, as I mentioned, we have compared with the instrument as well as the traditional method because wherever the instrument uh, it is not possible, we have gone with the alkali crop method. And uh, the changes we have observed, the main findings what uh, we observed is the maximum yield was in the uh, under the open condition, it was with the organic uh, manuring, whereas in the polyhouse or controlled condition, it was the integrated nutrient management. Uh, found to be a higher yield, whereas the yield decline was noticed under uh, polyhouse conditions, means polyhouse in the sense here what we mean is elevated temperature, uh, so 20.5% uh, uh, or 20.4% yield decline was noticed, but that also if you can go with the combination of organic, inorganic as well as mulching, uh, we could found that the yield reduction can be minimized or it can be reduced. So, which means that under adverse climatic conditions or extreme conditions, if the nutrient management or water management practices are followed, you will be able to sustain the crop. This is what our findings showed that enough mitigation strategies along with the adaptation strategies need to be adopted for sustaining the crop reproduction under changing climatic scenario. Similarly, for mulching also, we have done few field experiments. That results also, uh, these are all two, one is published in the current science and another one is the International Journal of Plant Production. You can verify, means uh, see those papers, field studies with the vegetables and perennials on carbon emission and how the water and nutrient management strategies we can adopt under especially the elevated temperature. So here also we found that uh, black pepper, the emission was higher because of the root uh, activity. Uh, and another thing is it is being grown with the support crop. So there will be two crops. So that may be one of the reasons for the higher emission and uh, uh, higher microbial activity. This is what I was saying. And uh, among the three crops, uh, the measure was from the uh, black pepper and mulching as a management practices enhance the uh, carbon sequestration potential on a long term basis. Similarly, soil temperature is also influencing the decomposition or uh, your GHG emission pattern. Similarly, as I mentioned in the beginning, under precision farming or micro irrigation, also we have measured the uh, carbon emissions and found that uh, the net emission is less in the case of micro irrigation. Uh, that is because the total productivity is higher and water productivity is less, so that water footprint will be less and energy savings is also there. Electricity emissions through emission through electricity is also less. So all this contribute together to make the net emission uh, less compared to the not means compared to the conventional method. Another thing is that under sugarcane we can go for the shredding of trash, which will improve the soil organic carbon one uh, way. Another way it is it results in the higher productivity and improvement in the soil health, as well as it is reducing the soil GHG emissions. So these are all few of the technologies which we are uh, having. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, five minutes I will take here and then I may be stopping. So if someone of you is interested, uh, you can uh, be in touch with us. Uh, a nutrient budgeting. This is one software uh, which we have obtained in the copyright. It is an integrated crop nutrient management software which will help you to derive the nutrient recommendations if you provide the database like uh, uh, which is the soil uh, there, soil samples or soil type or if you have some database. Then another one is low cost soil moisture sensor based automatic irrigation system. This actually we have filed for the patent which is uh, to be uh, get and then magnetic treatment of low quality irrigation water for improving the water and crop productivity. Then low cost domestic wastewater treatment system, 
uh, which I have not presented here, but if someone is interested, I can share those uh, means what we have done also, I can tell. Then drip fertigation techniques and irrigation and fertigation scheduling we have derived for most of the crops uh, in Kerala as well as Tamil Nadu. Then drought assessment and management system, this is also copyright we have obtained. Then coconut irrigation advisory system, uh, crop water requirement. Then DSS on soil erosion, copyright uptime. Uh, and carbon calculator. Soil erosion, I think I will show some of the slides. Uh, similarly, integrated crop nutrient management also, I will show some of the slides how it is being done. So, with respect to nutrient management or nutrient budgeting, this is the software uh, we were using. This is a very old study, like uh, 2007, 2010, like that. So, this also calibrated and validated for different sets of conditions. Uh, so, this will give you a picture like uh, this way. Uh, how uh, it is uh, going means uh, within the farm how the nutrient is flowing from one field to another field also we can understand the thickness of the line indicates the quantity of the nutrient flowing whereas the thin line indicates very less nutrients are flowing so we, a farmer or a agricultural officer can understand actually the nutrients where it is moving from whether it is going externally from uh, field to outside or coming inside all those things we can understand so it will help you to devise the policies or strategies so based on that we have derived the recommendations ENPK like that each one you can derive so this is the software it is available in the site also uh, you can very well verify so here what you need to provide the information is uh, some basic details about the farmer and the location if it is within Kerala and uh, Tamil Nadu we can give the locations and then the background database will fetch the soil details but suppose if for some other location you want to understand then you need to have the soil test uh, data or soil uh, data you should have so rainfall and all already inbuilt it is there so it will be showing if you want to change also we can alter then crop which is the crop the farmer is going to choose that has to be there but at the same time you have to give the basic details like previous crop what it was so all those information also you need to give so it is a little bit cumbersome process but still uh, for the agriculture officers and all it will be really helpful and uh, people are using it also uh, so this is what the soil health card finally it will come in the local language as well as the uh, in english and initially what is the status also it will give whether the nutrient balance is positive or negative so based on that, for the new crops, it will be adjusting how much quantity of nutrient you have to apply. So this is like the irrigation water requirement I was showing for uh, coconut, black pepper, for each zones. This is also one of the softwares. This is what I was telling about the low-cost soil moisture sensor-based automatic irrigation system. It can be given for greenhouses, polyhouses, or even open uh, fields, and you can operate through mobile. And few uh, like hydroponics and advanced uh, techniques also we have attempted and the changing scenario what will be happening to the urban agriculture and all. So then coming to the soil erosion DSS, this is what we have developed. So here we have uh, done for Kerala. Uh, so uh, we have the database uh, of the thematic layers of geology, soil, land use, land cover, geomorphology. And then based on satellite data, we computed the from the dam as well as the other database we computed the uh, stream order as well as the ero erosion factors rklscp and then delineated that after that what actions you have to do like whether you have to do which type of watershed management also we have come out with that so soil erosion will be quantified then prioritization of micro watersheds based on the land use then soil terrain characteristics we will be suggesting the suitable structures so this is actually initially for validation this paper also recently published uh, we used different models and based on that we computed that and the same has been evaluated in the field also using multi-slot devices and then calibrated and validated the models and this is the final uh, dss support this is also available in our website we can check it uh, soil erosion risk decision support system so initially you have to select the district then your taluk and then your panchayat. So automatically the map will be displayed like this, which area is a slight erosion, which area is moderate erosion, which is extremely severe erosion like that. Uh, and those uh, details uh, you can 
take it based on the panchayat. This is for two districts like Malapuram and Kannu. So after that, if suppose the soil conservation officer want to know about his areas, where the structures can be built or what are the management strategies they can adopt, it will be suggested. But it may not be that much accurate because that we are not validated. Up to erosion, we are validated. So here, automatically, it will take into Google Earth and show where these structures can be built. For example, a conduit bunds or your check dams. Like that, those information, it will be giving like this in the Google Earth. And the farmer can, uh, means the soil and water conservation officer can very well verify the same. So in a nutshell, uh, these are all the techniques or adaptation options. These are all known things only, but many of the things we have validated at the field level. And uh, so directly, if it is found to be suitable, we can go for adopting such techniques. And uh, holistically, that will try to improve your crop. So one is water saving technology, because most of our studies concentrated on soil and uh, means soil nutrient as well as the water management. So one is this one, then integrated farming systems, organic farming, and uh, conservation agriculture, agro horticulture, and agroforestry, especially in the mixed cropping systems. Then we choose of uh, means insurance. This is what uh, we tried in that pilot project, which I was telling about the paddy yield forecasting. So that uh, during the cropping season itself, you can forecast the yield. So if there is an extreme event happening, we can very well identify which area it is affected, so that the farmers can get the crop insurance. So it has a multiple usage, not only yield management, but at the same time, if there are climate extreme events and the crop is getting affected, that can be verified very well with that particular methodology. So these are all the techniques or technologies which is available with us. If someone is interested, you please uh, contact us. We will be ready to support. And uh, so here I would like to thank all my colleagues, the CIS scholars, as well as the our fellow scientists and the funding support was mainly from Department of Science and Technology, Kerala State Council, uh, DFAC, Ministry of Water Resources, Environment, Climate Change, etc. And with this, uh, I'll be stopping. Maybe another 10 minutes. I think I have stick on to the time. Uh, maybe it was very fast, uh, but just I want to uh, showcase all the things whatever available uh, with our results. And if someone is interested, uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any question, please ask it, sir. Please ask your questions. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, sir. Uh, as you said, the water saving technologies. Can we uh, adopt alternate wetting drying technology thoroughly in rice? If so, uh, what uh, what will be the prospectus of nutrient uh, 